welcome Andy Ray, Evidential Medium. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I um, have been enjoying your content for some time. I've been enjoying yours too. I love that we finally got together and had this conversation um, because I'm really big on the brain. I'm really big on fine tuning our antenna. Meditation is a huge part of my practice, as you know, because it elevates your intuition, making it easier to find the right partner because you're quieting the noise, you're quieting the static of what's going on in your life. Very true. Um, yeah, I always say like strengthening the psychic antenna is absolutely key or your intuitive antenna is absolutely key for choosing the right partners. And if you want to go a little deeper into that, like life path and life purpose, nothing is more um, detrimental or helpful to your life path and life purpose than choosing the right partner. I agree 100% because here's the thing, not just choosing the right partner, but being the right partner so that you can have a conflict-free relationship because the conflict in a relationship holds you back from having the focus you need to advance yourself in anything in life. So true. Um, <laughs> the wrong partner can actually make it impossible for you to access your own intuition. And I can say that from experience. If you are a psychic or an intuitive or even someone in your profession and you're with the wrong person, how can you possibly help others if you haven't helped yourself, right? Yeah, I agree. One million percent. Um, I, you know, career wise, uh, I wouldn't say that I really got anywhere. Nothing really changed for me. Career wise. I loved what I did. My career was stripping. So not that there was any kind of like a ladder to climb. Right. But um, but it like I wasn't motivated to do anything else. And it wasn't until I, I was with the right partner and being the right partner that, you know, my life evolved to the next stage, which, you know, I was helping people in a strip club, believe it or not, because it. the clients that came to me were the ones who needed their, their soul soothed, right? And so they would literally pay me to just sit and talk to them and, and just be like the pretend girlfriend. And, and help them feel heard and validated and cared for and important. Yeah, that's so interesting, isn't it? That's their higher self going, go talk to Chantel. She can help. <laughs> um, those interactions don't happen for no reason. I, I love you. I love you. So let, let's, I want, I want to know more about you. So you are an evidential medium. What does that mean? So being an evidential medium means that we are not only psychic, but we can also connect to departed people in evidential detail, meaning names, dates, health conditions, cause of death, all that. Um, and, you know, anyone can say, oh, grandma loves you. But if we can say, okay, grandma really liked Gilligan's Island, specifically had a dog named Charlie and was married in 1954, then you know for sure that's grandma. Yeah. Ooh, I love this. That's so cool. What brought you into this? Death. Oh. Um, yeah. So I had um, a connection with spirit my entire life and so did my whole family. We all kind of blew it off. It's like, oh, that was weird. Um, turns out when you have a certain volume of uh, interactions with spirit or paranormal things or weird coincidences, those stack up and they amount to your psychic, your medium. Um, and it wasn't until uh, my dad got sick that I kind of went, oh, I really need help. And no one with a pulse was being overly helpful as far as emotional management or strategy or anything like that. So I went, okay, I'm really ready for some really specific help. And um, I got it. And that's when I started reading the tarot. And from there, the, you know, the tarot is kind of like training wheels for psychic ability and even mediumship ability to an extent. And from there, I just got better and better and more training to the point that after he died, I basically woke up clairaudient one day. Uh, the clairs kind of the clair abilities, um, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance, clairaliens, and clairgustance all kind of filled in um, as I needed them, as I worked with the public more to the point where it became very clear I was supposed to do this professionally. And I always say, if you're meant to work with the public, your life circumstances will point you in that direction, much like your uh, experience at the club told you that you were supposed to be helping people. Yeah. Uh, I, ca I call it custom made. Right. And, and so like everything about you is designed. The sound of your voice is pleasing to people. The, you know, uh, like the upbringing, the circumstances, you know, for me, a lot of pain in my life, a lot of things I had to heal. 
um, and overcome. And, you know, I say every single thing I've gone through is, is part of my design to create me so that I can do what I can do. So that's so interesting. How long you've been doing this professionally for? About two and a half years. Oh, is it, as, I mean, I feel like it's been so much longer than that. Um, um, sure feels that way. <laughs> so, I mean, from like people say how long you've been doing this brand. I'm like officially since 2015 was when I branded, but I've been doing it long before that. I think you're the same. Precisely. Um, there used to be a joke amongst my group of friends. Like if there was a sad girl with a bad boyfriend at a party, she would find me. Um, we would end up having those conversations, um, very fortuitous. And once again, all of those situations point you in the direction of your ultimate purpose. Yes. Oh, I love this. So, you know, I'm a dating and relationship coach. Let's talk about love. I see you talking about soul connections. Yes. Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we learn different lessons with the same souls lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Like, yes, we all reincarnate. Um, it's, it doesn't mean we play the same roles every time though. And that's why if you have an especially like mothery role towards your partner, or, um, if they have a very authoritative attitude towards you, it's like, maybe y'all were each other's partners in past lifetimes or, um, parents in past lifetimes, or, um, if you feel like you have a very close connection with a parent, it's like, oh, we were siblings um, in a past lifetime. It's not an exact science. Like I'm a little sketched out by hypnosis, but the people who do it well can bring through these really specific references to past lives um, where someone was clearly their dad's brother or their partner's mom or something like that. And that's why I say there is like data to support this. We're not just making it up. Um, well, I mean, seriously, like energy is incredible. It's an incredible force. And I think we underestimate it. Like when I first learned to meditate, I went to like an intensive weekend. We, the watches came off. We had no concept of time. Uh, and like some, at some point in the middle of the night on the last night that I was there, um, after all we did was learn, meditate, sleep, eat. That was it. We did it. We did a not an experiment, it was an exercise where people who had done the weekend before volunteered to sit across from us and they had a piece of paper with somebody's name, the city they lived in, um, how old they were, and there was something wrong with them. Everybody had an ailment of some kind. So, he, you know, we go into our meditative space, we bring that, like when, we, when we're in our space, we tell our, our partner, we say, okay, I'm ready. And the partner says, okay, the person's name is, and they are in the city. And that's all the information you have. And you bring that person in, you see them, you shake their hand, you say, hello, you say, can I touch you? And they give you permission. And then, and you're sitting in the chair, your eyes are closed, but you're doing this in the air and you can feel the pushback against your hand. And, you know, I, I had a vacuum when I got to one of the legs and I said, he's missing the bone below the knee. My partner says, are you sure? And I said, yes. And he goes, open your eyes, shows me the cards and amputation. And other people had things like cancers and kidney disease, all this kind of stuff. And everybody got it right that night. And it just blew my mind to energy. And yesterday I was watching TV and they're talking about heart transplants and how people who get an organ transplant will suddenly have a change in behaviors. Like now I'm a jogger. Now I love this kind of food because the energy in the organ is transplanted into this new person. So I have no doubt that energy survives. I, and I actually remember in my twenties talking about, tra I called it traveler souls, where somebody would come with you from life to life to help you learn lessons. Uh, we have many traveler souls then in that case. Um, and remember, it's not limited to biological family. It can be partners, friends, teachers, mentors, et cetera. So um, I absolutely love that you um, have dipped into mediumship a little bit yourself. Um, that's really cool. Um, you can bet when someone comes to seek out your services, it is because they are being prompted to do so. Um, I have had clients um, like dream about me before booking with me, um, just really feel compelled to watch my TikTok lives or whatever, or just binge watch my YouTube or whatever. Um, their loved ones in spirit and their guides are going, no, go to this person, they can help. And I'm sure the same thing is happening with you and your clients. So many times I remember on my book tour, um, I'd be sitting in a store and a woman would, a woman would come in and like, I, here's what I would do. Cause I'm a little mis tactical here. Right. 
So I would have fix that shit in one hand and no more assholes in the other. And when women would come in, I'd look for a ring. And if there was no ring, I'd go, is this what you're looking for? And I flash no more assholes. And if they're wearing a ring, I go, is this what you're looking for? And I had so many women who would like beeline immediately over and go, oh my God, like, I I was sitting at home. I had no plans today. And all of a sudden I had this impulse to come to the bookstore. This is exactly what I need. Yep. Right place, right time. And I've talked about this in my content before. Like I'll set an intention every single day. Keep me in the right place at the right time, doing the right things for the right reasons. And so far, so good. Yes. I love, love, love. How are you enjoying TikTok, by the way? I don't. (laughs) Oh, you don't rancid environment but that's okay um it's definitely far reaching and um far more impactful than the people who aren't on it realize that's for sure a wonderful place to share ideas yeah is it Uh, your business in any way oh yeah yeah social media marketing all the way um i love doing tiktok lives um it's a great way to keep um a hand on the pulse of what kind of spiritual information people need on like a day-to-day basis. Like my grandma just died. Is she around me? Automatically? Yes. Um, (laughs) My dog just died. I thought I saw her out of the corner of my eye. Am I imagining it? No, you probably saw your dog. Um, People need this information in an on-demand kind of way. And TikTok is the perfect format for that. Is there a difference between soulmates, twin flames, you know, the traveler souls, I called it, you called it, uh, what, what did you call it earlier? Um, soul ties. Oh yeah. We were talking about soul contracts. Soul contracts. So yeah, you can have, um, and keep in mind the word contract is a little too rigid for my taste, uh, but it's the closest human like equivalent we have to the concept I'm referring to, which is that we agree with these souls. Like, okay, let's incarnate. Let's do, let's learn this from each other. Um, And that's your agreement with that person. Um, You can have soul contracts uh, or soul agreements with people who are really terrible. You can learn really hard lessons. Sometimes the lessons are very unpleasant. And um, yeah, in having that agreement, that person is a soulmate to you. Like there are soulmates that are awful. Um, I have, yeah, like I have a soulmate in this life. Like we dated, I don't know, six, seven years ago. But the point is, Yes, we're soulmates. When we cross over, we're going to have a good laugh about the lessons we taught each other. But in this life, he needs to stay the F away from me. Like everyone has people like that on their journey, right? Where people um, intentionally, you cause each other strife on purpose, basically. So from there, um, there's soulmates, there's twin flames. I think the technical definition of a twin flame is a little off. Um, I realize it's, you know, it it appeals to the epidemic of codependency to claim that, oh, there's another half of you out there walking around. That's just the perfect mirror to you. Um, I think it more likely that two souls before they incarnate go, okay, we're going to team up. We're going to do this great work together. But before we do all that great work together, we're going to cause each other some trouble. (laughs) We're going to force each other to really grow. And that's what a twin flame is. Um, Soulmates and twin flames, I, I don't encourage people to go down the rabbit hole and be like, is he my, is he my twin flame? Is he my soulmate? Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. It's like if someone is causing you issues and you're not compatible in that moment, let it go. Don't chase it down. Don't sit there and twiddle your thumbs. Do what your soul came here to do. Get on path, get on purpose. If that person is meant for you, they will be flung back onto your path when it's time, when they're a good fit for you and you're a good fit for them. Back to your comment about um, being the best partner you can be. Um, Everybody who is in their victimhood vibe about their twin flame or soulmate separation situation, it's kind of like, focus all of that irritation you have towards the runner or the person who left, focus all that irritation into fixing yourself because you're half the problem. Right. Uh, A A lot of people aren't comfortable with that. Uh, I have a, I have a few negative reviews because a few, a few people weren't comfortable with that because, you know, fix that shit, especially is all about taking responsibility for your behaviors, your thoughts, your emotions. And I've had a few people ego vomit into my Amazon reviews, um, oh. saying, well, she blames women for everything. It's always the woman's fault. And it's like, 
first of all, everything in your life is under your control. So if you are with a shitty partner, that's still your decision. It really is. Yeah. Um, there is a shocking amount of overlap between what I do and what you do. Yeah. I would say about 90% of my clients have married or had children with the wrong person. And I spend a lot of time, and this is why I teach intuitive development, which is very different from like psychic or mediumship development. Intuitive development is just learning how to trust your decision-making skills. That includes choosing the right people to be around you, friends, family, and lovers. Yeah. So I love that you went this way because my next question is this, how can you tell the difference between your intuition and anxiety? Oh, yes, that's actually, I think I still have that pinned on my, uh, the top of my TikTok page, but yeah, I'll give you a quick rundown of how that works. Um, Intuition is going to be solution oriented, action oriented. It's not going to highlight the fear. It's going to highlight the solution. Um, My favorite example is let's say you've stepped into the path of a speeding bus. Your anxiety is going to say, oh my God, a bus but your intuition is going to say, step to the left. Yeah. Um, I, I get repeatedly reminded of this in situations in my own life where um, I become acutely aware that if I allow myself to venture into a hyper-emotional state or a hyper-fearful or hyper-anxious state, I will be taken away from my intuition. I won't be able to access it. When I start thinking in hypotheticals or what ifs, it's like, oh, I'm out of touch. I need to realign. And uh, you can do that uh, just by deciding to do so. Mm -hmm. By recognizing the problem, you are 50% of the way towards fixing it and getting back in alignment. Yes. And obviously you agree meditation helps enhance your intuition because it shrinks the amygdala, which is stress, fear, and anxiety, which are the emotions that interfere with your intuition. Yep. Your lizard brain is always going to take you away from your intuition. I agree. Yeah. You- uh, meditation. Oh, go ahead. No, you, you first, my love. Oh, um, I was just going to say that um, intuition and meditation definitely um, are tied together, but meditation isn't the only way to access intuition. I think an awareness of your conscious everyday thoughts is going to take you just as far as meditation. Meditation is one tool. Another tool is committing to an awareness of your daily thoughts, your daily patterns. Be like, what do I think about repeatedly in a day? Do I have anxious thoughts multiple times per day? Is it about, you know, did I leave my curling iron on? Is it about like, (laughs) what what does my coworker think of me? Like, if you find that a lot of your thoughts are- How's how's my hair, right? How's my makeup? People looking at me weird, yes. Yes. And if you find yourself thinking that way a lot, it's like, oh, that's going to make it impossible for me to access my intuition. So I always say um, using your intuition will require you to care significantly less about things that objectively don't matter. Uh, Yeah, I do. Um, That's uh, the parallels here are so beautiful. Um, I call it the art of indifference. Yes. Oh, I love that. Um, (laughs) I tell people give 200% fewer fucks. Yes. It yeah. does not matter what your coworker thinks of you or what, even what your partner thinks of you to a certain extent. It's like, if you're microanalyzing every move you make, did they give you the impression you needed to do that? Or are you doing it because of, you know, the household you were raised in yeah. um, attachment theory? Um, I can't believe how often I have to reference that uh, in my day-to-day work, because if you don't understand where you came from, you can't understand your choices right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't, I don't like delve into attachment theory because I'm a behaviorist and mm-hmm. as a behaviorist, I like to take the label off and just focus on the behaviors. Okay. So I love that. I was listening to some of your other like guests and like everyone has, um, useful tools and every tool has a place, but I want to say we, um, default to archetypes and stereotyping and generalizing because we don't trust our ability to gauge individuals with our intuition. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think things like the Myers-Briggs system, human design, even to an extent, 
They're just generalizations. And every day you or someone else could wake up to be like, I don't want to be the way I was yesterday. I'm deciding to be a completely different person. And then your, your archetype or your whatever doesn't fit anymore. And then you have to do all this mental gymnastics to be like, oh, well, I thought I was an INFTP or whatever. And now you're not. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can change on just at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I work with change changes my entire career and I start with changing the brain structure, right? Shrinking that amygdala, increasing the hippocampus. And this changes how you feel because this is your perception center. And when you change how you feel, you literally change your DNA. They've done studies of people who were depressed and then not depressed, or they were not depressed and then they became depressed and they saw the shift in their DNA. Right. Um, we have genes that we don't express unless our environment prompts us to express them, switching genes on and off. I actually talked about that on my podcast too. Um, decide to switch off the gene as if it isn't working for you. Yeah, I love that. Ladies, everybody listening, you are so in control. You're so much more in control than you know you are. And I love bringing these women on, like you, bringing like, like women who are in control, who teach people, help guide people become more in control of their own lives and their own destinies. Do you have a favorite meditation for enhancing intuition? I actually don't. I have only strategies that I recommend. Um, if you are actively grieving or if you have acute anxiety, depression, anything like that, or if you have ADHD or ADD, I recommend um, a couple different methods. Um, Something that ties all of those groups together, by the way, is the inability to focus. And um, it doesn't work against you, believe it or not. Um, I would say my ADHD um, kind of soft diagnosis uh, is a benefit to my work, not a detractor. Um, so the strategy I do recommend is like flipping on the TV, but turning off the sound. So your brain is just a little bit occupied, but not entirely. This allows um, you to be very relaxed, so your intuition, once again, will bubble up in a very solution oriented way, like apply for jobs, <laughs> like something like that, or dump him, something like that. Um, those thoughts will just pop up with no lead up. It's like an airdrop into your brain and that's intuition or spirits talking to you if you happen to be a medium. Um, another uh, strategy I implement daily is exercise, keeping your physical body moving. Uh, once again, purges your energy. If you're kind of energetically spongy or empathic or clairsentient, uh, purge yourself of everybody else's funk by moving. Um, highly recommend that. And once again, when you're in that place where you're, your physical body is functioning and you're focused, but your conscious mind is free, they'll just drop things in there that are related to what you need to do. Um, and then another strategy I recommend is chores, believe it or not, like housework. Um, I firmly believe this is the way my dad used to meditate. Um, you just sort of focus on the dishes or mopping or whatever, uh, maybe put on some music, have multiple stimuli going at once in your environment. And that's, that clears the way in your brain for spirit or your intuition to get your attention. I love that. What would you say to somebody who doubts their intuition? You doubt your intuition because someone made you doubt your intuition. Um, you can almost always trace a person's lack of trust in their own decision-making ability back to partners or parents or bullies at school who um, told you that you couldn't trust yourself. Um, example would be like if your mom always told you, oh, you're making the wrong decision. Oh, oh, you're a screw up, something like that. You go forward in your life professionally and interpersonally, you're going to be thinking like, oh, I'm not perceiving that person's motives correctly because mom said so, dad said so. And I think Sven said something very similar to you. It's like, it's someone else's voice in your head. It's not your own. Yeah. That's a perfect description. So I saw that you have a dream guide that you give away. And I think I have a fair amount of people who'd be interested in a dream guide. Can you talk about that? So to clarify, I don't give it away, but it is available for instant okay. download for sure. And, um, so dreams are fascinating because um, they are so often metaphorical messages about what needs to be happening in your waking life. Uh, they can also be precognitive. I can say very confidently that um, 
dreams level the playing field between psychics and mediums and non-psychic and mediums. Everyone is psychic or a medium when they're asleep. Um, this is why visitation dreams are very common, people experiencing contact with their departed loved ones. And there are instances where um, you wake up from a dream and you're like, wow, that was really positive. I saw grandma again, she gave me great advice. That's a visitation. And there are other instances where dreams are just metaphors, maybe not outlandish ones, um, but they are telling you what you need to do. So the trick is figuring out what that metaphor means in your personal frame of reference, because all spirit contact will come through in your personal frame of reference. No one can interpret your dreams better than you can. Right. Um, can somebody come to you in a dream in a form other than themselves? Because I think my sister came to me as a golden retriever. In which case, um, I would say look out for golden retrievers in your environment. Um, they, they're very efficient. I will say that they will get messages across in the most efficient manner possible. And if that imagery maybe reminds you of her character or her personality, um, yes, yeah, that's a visitation. So when, um, when women say to me, I had a dream about my ex, what does that mean? Uh, I love say, my answer is they own a neural pathway in your brain and it fired off while you were sleeping and mm -hmm. you equated to a fart. I farted in my sleep. No, oh, that's a really great description. Um, I'm going to add on to that though. Um, yes, they own a pathway in your brain, but they themselves as a character are like a metaphor. Think of them like a character in a movie. What characteristics of that person are still traumatizing you to this day? Um, what kind of unresolved issues do you have from that relationship that are affecting you right now? Because that person is now a metaphorical character that you need to decode so that you can get over it. Um, it does not mean automatically that they're coming back. You should go back. It, so, you know, sometimes there are situations where a certain amount of like telepathy or um, meeting up in the astral can occur. And I know that's really hokey, but I've had it happen where like you have a connection with someone in a dream um, and then they call you the next day. That's yeah. not by accident. Yeah. Um, but most of the time it's like, a, okay, you need to decode what you need to process from that relationship. But other times, yeah, it's an indicator they might pop back up. So the trick is just being okay with either one. Um, you know, you've healed from a connection when you're not obsessed with it, finding its way back to you. Mm -hmm. I like using the fart metaphor because when it makes them laugh and, and so when they're asking this question, like, because they're in a state, right? They had this dream and they're in a state about it. What does it mean? And I go, it's just your brain farting. You farted in your sleep. Like, oh, okay. And they, and they feel better. Um, because there was some fear to it in us. So there was fear, there was confusion. And so giving them that explanation, it really makes them feel lighter and helps them feel like they can move on from their ex. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the end result is the same. You yeah. should be, you should have resolution around that person or relationship. That's why it surfaces to be resolved. I'm not a little bit psychic. I think I'm kind of a lot of psychic. I've literally yelled at people in my brain and they've turned around. Um, and my husband, uh, he, like I, it, it's so sweet because like, we'll be like hugging or kissing. And then I go into like my, my heart energy and I create the love and then I wrap it around. I can push it into him. I push that energy into him and I'm not changing anything about myself. And he goes, Hmm. Uh, or one time I was meditating and I got a vision of me walking up the sidewalk to his office with a plate of food. And I was like, oh, my husband's hungry. So I called him, baby, are you hungry? He goes, yeah, I was just about to call you, let you know to be careful on the way up to the office because there's a hose across the sidewalk. So I love, you know, I love that we have this ability. We have this capability. Do you think everybody has that? Yes. Um, it you know, their access to it is um, dictated similarly to their access to their intuition. It's like, are they in alignment? Are they paying attention? Are they emotionally invested in you? Are you emotionally invested in them? Because when it goes both ways, like you and your husband, of course, it's going to be, of course, you're going to have that telepathy. Um, I can think of instances of telepathy between myself and both of my parents. Um, just incredible. <laughs> the things you can uh, pick up from someone energetically without meaning to. So I don't think you're nuts at all. That all sounds very normal. Yeah. I like People to talk about siblings as well, having that connection. 
Mm, I envy twins, identical twins and, and how connected they are. I love the subject and I love being able to bring somebody on who is so knowledgeable and in depth with this. Where can people find you? Well, thank you for saying all that. Um, my website is andyraymedium.com and that's Andy with a Y. And of course you can find me on TikTok, andyraymedium.com, or uh, sorry, at andyraymedium.com is my little, uh, at Andy Ray, your handle. <laughs> my TikTok handle is, you know, at Andy Ray Medium. And um, July sessions, classes, and events are available on my website. They should be up and running today. So thank you so much, Chantel. Sorry for the brain fart there. Speaking of things just popping out of our minds, <laughs> happens to all of us, I think. Um, thank you. This was great fun and um, very much looking forward to future content. Yes, oh, me too. And I really want everybody to go watch you because I do love your content. I think you are very calming, uh, very insightful, very knowledgeable. So I appreciate you being on TikTok. Thank you. Um, that makes it all worth it for sure. Mm, thank you, Andy. I'll talk to you soon, lovely. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.